Thanks everyone, it's lovely to be here. I am um, the ancient champion, but not totally, completely, until I put this hat on. I'm, I'm um, a fantastically shy person, and uh, so this helps. And I just want to say thanks to Mel and Rob for pushing the boat out this morning. What an incredible thing you've done. And Fiona, I have to say, Fiona, you obviously spend a lot of time on the boat, so <laughs> if that was the most authentic uh, number 11 bus. I have encountered. Well, okay, so I'm excited to be here. I'm going to read a story from. Well, I have this collection of short stories, six stories about motoring nowhere, and uh, there, there are actually seven stories, but uh, it is called Six Stories About Motoring Nowhere. And mainly, within each of the stories, people motor nowhere and they think about their cars, and that's what they do, and other things. Anyway, in this, there is a little car action. This story is uh, called Would You Spend the Rest of Your Life with Me? And, uh, it goes a little like this. Here we go. Although it was cold, Annie wasn't sure whether to pull her coat on and go out and sit on the front wall and wait, or to pop out when she arrived. She said she would call when she got outside. There'd be nowhere to park. There hardly ever was, and that could be a problem. And on the phone, she reiterated the money part, so just, uh, just so Annie knew. Maybe like some people didn't even have it when she arrived. Did that happen? Maybe it was because Annie was new. Anya stood in the kitchen diner and squeezed the tea bag against the side of her mug. She was a little anxious, maybe a little excited. She'd forgotten to put the colander of drained spinach into the corn, but the peppers were in the oven now, and maybe the spinach wouldn't be missed. Anyway, the spinach wouldn't take long. She could do it at the end when they began talking. The flowers in the vase on the table were simple, maybe just cheap, lilacs and estrangia. Lovely but not ostentatious. King Tubby's declaration of dub played quietly, she thought. While that wasn't the way to play dub, she loved this version of Take 5. It was one of the first CDs they'd found at a car boot, and they both loved it, and she wondered whether she could find the LP now they were both collecting vinyl. She never bought drugs before. Esme would be back soon, and Annie wanted to get dressed. She wanted everything to be just right. She considered the illicit thrills of Rubicon's cross, and her parents' taboos defied. This one barely counts, she thought. The neighbours, though, they were worried. They'd be figuring out things without mentioning anything in particular. The phone rang, the phone rang there, and her dog raised its head and didn't do anything else. Anya felt a little self-conscious as she stood leaning in through the car window, unsure of what to say. The car was double parked, but there wasn't anyone waiting to get by to, uh, to stop the halting conversation. She didn't know how many minutes she needed to stay for, just want to hand over the money and go back inside. The woman in the car didn't appear to be any older than Anya. She looked familiar. She was detached and cool and kept checking the mirrors for traffic. She was coming from work, she said. She just changed jobs and used to work in a factory and now worked in a shop. She'd seen her old factory friends and they were making these sweets for Valentine's Day. Annie didn't know what to expect and told her she worked in the clinic. The woman had two heart-shaped cardboard boxes on the passenger seat. Anya pulled the money from her jacket pocket and offered it through the window. Thanks for doing this, she said. The woman didn't immediately take the money. There'd been a price miscalculation, she said. She opened one of the boxes. Caramels and jellies, mainly, she said. They ended up being ten more. But don't worry about it. I can get it next time. There was a plastic bag inside a heart-shaped box and it was difficult to see through. But even in the diffused street lights, the colours looked pretty. And that's it. That's all you get from me.